going to continue my field test of Zig Memory Systems brushables, which are twin-tipped, twin-colored uh, water-based pens. I've already done a video about them on the Windsor and Newton pigment paper. Let me grab that. And I liked how the markers performed, but I didn't like how the paper took the markers. So I'm doing another piece, smaller this time, just to get a feel for the paper on um, cold press watercolor paper. And it's really cheap cold press watercolor paper. It's um, from a Canson XL pad, which I like using with water-based markers, as this sort of a thick stock is less likely to become abraded from the nibs. These have very soft um, brush nibs on both sides. They have two colors. And the nibs are somewhat comparable to a Copic nib in terms, they're a little bit smaller, but in terms of um, flexibility, they're very similar. Almost capped it with the Copic there. A little bit stiffer, but they're still some of the best water-based marker nibs I've come across for this kind of an application. And I finally dug up my, the only green I own, Cool Cucumber. Um, I got it a while back when I had an Art Snacks subscription, um, and they only sent one. And even though these markers are they do blend color into color. Let's see if I can find my swatches. Yeah. Even though you can very easily blend color into color, I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> and I, whoop, I still feel like one marker is a little bit hard to use. Two's a little bit easier. With this very light color, it's kind of hard. You can actually tell a little bit better on camera which one's the tint and which one is the hue. The hue being the, um, the color that you can actually find in the Zig brush, uh, the Zig memory system, which are coordinating colors that are pretty much the same throughout Kuretake Zig's collection. So that means you should be able to match this up with your clean colors. You should be able to match this up if you have a uh, Kura color markers, which are their alcohol-based markers, and. Um, I have some of their new to me, but maybe not new to you, uh, Cura Color brush markers coming in soon. So I'll be able to talk to you guys about that. In the past, I have reviewed the Cura Color, um, both the original big bodied marker and the smaller twin. And something I'm already noticing is even on this paper, I'm getting a little bit of smudge from my Mitsuo Ida. And that was one of the big problems on the, the Windsor & Newton marker paper. Um, is that no matter what markers I'm using, I was getting a smudge, but I think maybe I just hit a patch of graphite that I didn't erase properly because I'm not catching so much of the smudge anymore. So I'm just doing an outline on this watercolor paper with the tint of Cool Cucumber. And now I'm going to grab my water brush and, um, try to blend it out a little bit see how well that goes all right not too bad not too bad not quite um they don't disperse quite as easily as a watercolor marker would but they you can blend them out a bit with water you can also use a Tombow ABT blender marker to blend your color out and I will grab mine and show you guys that marker as soon as I finish what I'm doing here because with most water-based markers the longer you let that ink sit on the paper the less likely you are to be you're the less likely you'll be able to move it later so I want to go ahead and get my pigment kind of moving So let's see, here's my Tombow ABT, if you guys are unfamiliar with it. The nib is a little bit stained, but it still works pretty well. And I've been using it to blend all sorts of different brands. Oh, 
Oh, I almost capped it in the wrong one. That's been that kind of night. It also has a small detail tip, which um, I, my detail tip is dry. You can tell how often I use it because I didn't even know that until just now. So on this kind of paper, these markers are a little bit dark, um, even if you're using the hue. And I think I'm going to use the Tombow and maybe regret doing that. I'm trying to scrub any remaining color that I had out because there is a little bit of um, uh, blue-gray from doing the lavender on the, the picture I gestured to that you guys can't see. And um, it is not working so well for blending on this watercolor paper. Let me try my water brush. I think I might end up with a muddy mess. And I think there aren't any um, browns lighter than, than fawn, which is the one I'm holding right here. So um, on this sort of a paper where the pigments appear very dark, I'm sorry, the dyes appear dark for skin tone, you're going to want to keep in mind uh, that the Tombow ABT doesn't necessarily work so well with these markers on this paper. It did work, um, I had swatched it on, I thought it was the same kind of paper. Um, I guess I was wrong and it seemed to work okay. It could even be something as simple as the amount of humidity outside could be different from the day I swatched it on. That does make a difference. So um, I had actually thought this paper was going to perform really well after using these on the marker paper, but I'm having a lot of problems now that are a combination of me trying to blend these markers on paper that they don't get along so well with and the color coming out kind of dark but maybe we can fix her face a little bit later. And I think I still have at least one more test with these. Uh, I'm going to try them on a nice marker paper, either the Windsor & Newton marker paper I was recently sent or on some Copic paper and see how that works. It should be a good stopgap between the pigment marker paper, which has a slight resist, it seems like, and this paper where I'm just like chewing it up. So since I'm using a water brush, I'm going to have to allow my paper to dry before I can do anything on the skin or anywhere around the skin. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into the green and darken it up a little and maybe even use the hue instead of just the tint for some shading. Now even though it's watercolor paper and the paper has absorbed the water, um, so it's not sitting on the surface any longer, um, it's still going to take a little while to dry and I'm noticing that even though these brushes are fairly flexible and soft on this paper it's already starting to pill. Um, so my recommendation for these brushes so far is a paper with a coating. Um, so maybe even cardstock but I'm gonna have to check that and probably not to introduce water if you're using cardstock. Isn't it strange how they can perform or feel like they perform really well on certain materials and then really kind of fight you on other materials? I was so prepared to like really love these things and it was just a matter of finding the right paper and now I've got some serious reservations due to the complications on the biggie pad. Um, I'm going to try and zoom in enough so you guys can see where it's pilling on her head. A 
and that's something I'm sure you want to be aware of, especially if you're using these for um, coloring cards. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to want a card or a, an original illustration where the paper has been kind of chewed up. I think in my other video I'd even suggested that these might be an alternative for artists who do conventions but don't want to bring their expensive alcohol markers with them. And uh, seeing how my paper is getting kind of eaten up, I am reconsidering that. But I will give them that one last test before I write them off. Since I really did like how they handled on the Winsor Newton pigment marker paper, I just didn't like the resist that the paper has had with all the, the markers I've used. So you can see there's some splotchiness on the face, there's some splotchiness on the nose, and sadly I don't really want to spend all night doing this, so I'm not going to tweak this as much as I really could. I'm actually going to grab the water marker. So, um, maybe if Zig comes out with um, a blender, that would work a little bit better. I mean, these are a pigment ink, they're acid free, they're archival, they're light fast, they're they say they're waterproof, and what that means is they're waterproof after they've fully dried. Feed, fl fade proof and non-bleeding, which basically means they're in the same category as um, the Winsor & Newton pigment markers, except with a water base. And I don't know if you guys know this about your alcohol markers, but they, because they're dye-based, they're dye based, um, they are prone to fading. And I do plan on doing a color fastness chart for several different brands, probably for red, since red, maybe red and yellow, those colors seem to be kind of fugitive. Um, at some point in the future, you guys can make that happen if you are interested in that a little quicker by either donating to my PayPal, which is up on my blog, or you can um, hold out for my Patreon because that's going to be a reward tier. It's probably going to be a, at the like one month hits a hundred dollars. I'm gonna do a three month sun test for all of my the markers in my fairly extensive collection. That's gonna be too dark. And see, the problem is once the, your paper starts getting chewed up, it's going to start pulling ink and pulling water from other areas, so you can end up getting some really unattractive bleeding because your paper is damaged. So that's definitely a reason to be careful with uh, paper pilling. to, in, when possible, avoid techniques that and materials that are going to cause your paper to pill. Now, it looks like some of the colors dried a little bit better than they, than they were looking. So that's kind of a relief, but I still have to be careful when applying layers in these damaged areas because I don't really want to exacerbate the pilled paper. And I think some of that was because I tried to use the Tombow blender and um, sometimes it works really well. Like I used it on this paper for up and up markers, which are a Target children's grade watercolor marker, and it worked 
just like, I mean water-based marker, it worked just like alcohol-based markers. Like the blending was really nice, I could work really quickly, I could achieve a lot of layers. Um, and it just doesn't want to work on this paper with these markers. Because it you can see her face is definitely looking like she's got psor psoriasis going on or a bad sunburn where her skin is starting to to flake. And that's not necessarily something you want to happen to your paper. And I really do think it's the texture of this paper. I kind of think if I was using a cold press, I um, mean a hot press watercolor paper, this wouldn't even be an issue. I'm gonna let that dry because that looks really bad right now. Hopefully it'll dry a little bit better than it currently looks since things tend to dry lighter than they first go down. It's really a shame though, because I was really prepared to like these markers. And now I'm at a loss. And part of the issue might also be that the on these, um, the pigment is sinking into the paper too quickly to be easily blended. Whereas with the Windsor & Newton paper I was using, the pigments were um, just sitting on top of the paper for like 10 to 13 minutes. And um, so I couldn't do anything with them because it was like just sitting in a pool on top of the paper. So I think the happy medium is going to be a paper that absorbs the pigments slowly but does absorb the pigments. And it, when you see me tapping the paper, it's to see how wet the paper still is. Because um, while I would like to work on this fairly quickly, it is <laughs> it doesn't it, it doesn't want to absorb into the paper. So I'm kind of working at the the marker's pace. I mean, it is absorbing into the paper, but it's staying wet, so um, that means the paper is still kind of susceptible to, to damage, surface damage. I also have some hot press watercolor paper, and if I'm feeling so inclined, I might try it on that as well, because that would be a sturdy paper that's a heavy weight, but has a flat surf like a smooth surface texture or I could try this on a plate for still maybe and see if that's any better I will say I'm kind of like lazily scrubbing I will say they um, apply with less streaking than say the, <laughs> the Crayola super tips or other water-based markers I have tested on my blog So that is still a point in their favor.
the fact that they dry waterproof and um, are archival and take a little while to dry might make them interesting to stampers to actually apply pigment or color to their stamps before stamping. They're just really damaging the paper surface a lot. So I'm going to have to pause the video and allow this to dry because it it's like damp. I can't apply color on top of it because it's going to tear up the paper. Alright, I think... I don't know. More like I'm tired of waiting. But it seems like enough time has passed to where, at least for the smaller ones, I can kind of fill in some of the shading. These do layer, it just takes time. And it seems like when you put two layers of the tint down, it's almost as dark as the hue. So that's just something, at least on this paper here. Um, on the paper, on the Windsor Newton illustration I was doing, the colors came out so much lighter because the paper itself was resisting the ink. And I guess that's because um, that's so the pigment markers can, the, the ink in them can sit on top and remain blendable and paintable. Um, but I mean, if you use any other markers on that paper, it will affect. Anyway, the, the long and short of it is I don't actually recommend using watercolor paper, or at least not cold press, with these markers. We'll eventually find a paper that works for them, but it is not cold press watercolor paper. really want to I really want a better blend on her face over here so I think I'm gonna take a page this is an, ac an acrylic um, it's an acrylic card holder and uh, I'm gonna take a page from like every craft blogger I know of and I'm putting some of the ink on my acrylic block and I'm picking it up with my pen, I'm swooshing it around and I'm applying it to improve the, the, the blending on her face and I'm laughing at myself because oh, I don't know I was actually looking for like scrap plastic and I couldn't find any But this works. I just don't want to stain the card holder. I guess that's probably not a thing I really have to worry about all that much. So the nice thing about using the water brush is the water brush isn't going to tear up the paper the way... Um, and this is pretty much true for any water-based marker. So if you want to use um, the colors or the pigments in your water-based markers and you don't want to tear up your paper, 
with many brands you can apply it to an acrylic block or masking tape on the side or um, like scrap plastic and that way you can more easily blend transitions like the difference between this and that is pretty striking and you can barely see the color on the acrylic block I should clean that first hopefully this will work on this one too So there, I guess, this little guy has earned its keep. I usually use it to hold the um, my swatch cards while I'm painting so I can reference colors and they're not on the desktop in my way. But now I know it can do double, double duty. Maybe will even see me use it that way more often. So I want to let this dry and I was thinking about doing like little red flowers on the shirt. So I'll be right back. So another issue with um, surface damage on your paper is if you're doing a design like these little flowers, they'll bleed out and look messy and just poorly done. Which I guess is okay if you're looking for um, like more of a hand created fabric because then it's got softer lines. But if you want um, like distinct prints, it's not as not gonna work as much in your favor And I'm just doing a really simple petal pattern. Since I thought the gray dress on its own would look kind of boring. But I can feel with the brush, I can feel where the paper is damaged because there's just like a slightly different, it, like more of a pull really. Perhaps the thing, perhaps these markers don't have as much glycerin as um, like the up and up markers had, um, which would cause more surface abrasion. I think the glycerin actually kind of protects the paper from too much wear and tear. Pink was cute, but the red isn't working out as well. But it's also getting kind of late and my hand is getting kind of shaky. And I'm freehanding flowers, albeit very simple flowers, I should be able to do this.
and I think the I think the brush nib on this is already getting a little bit beaten up. Not too bad, I guess. All right, so that was Zig Memory System Brushable Brushables. <laughs> the slogan being "Brush Up on Color." on um, cold press watercolor paper. Blended, or attempts were made to blend it with Tombow ABT Colorless Blender. That did not go so well on this paper. I ended up using a water brush, and I also ended up using an acrylic block, and that worked a bit better. Um, my opinion, this is not the right paper for these markers. Um, I found that the marker, I don't like the effect as much, but I found the markers handled better on the Windsor & Newton uh, pigment paper. So I'm going to try these on a coated watercolor, I mean a coated uh, marker paper and see if that, but not the pigment paper, and see if that is a good solution for these markers because I really like them and I'd really like to be able to recommend them. And right now I'm kind of caught in between the p marker, the paper being the problem and the marker being the problem. So, uh, I'm Becca Hilburn. If you enjoyed this review, or if you enjoy my reviews in general, if you find them helpful, if you find them informative, if they've helped you decide a project was or was not for you, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with your friends. Um, if you left me a like, if you considered subscribing to my channel, because I'm going to be posting, I have already posted, and I'm going to be posting even more tutorials and reviews, focusing primarily on markers, both water-based and um, alcohol-based, but also on watercolors. Those tend to be the, the areas I focus the most on. Um, and I would appreciate it if you also checked out my blog. I've been writing it for six years. I have reviewed dozens of alcohol markers on there. I have reviewed almost 10 different brands of watercolor markers at this point. Um, it's natosoup.blogspot.com. I hope you guys have a good evening. Good night, guys.